Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wonder if I could ask uh, everybody to switch off their, uh, their mobile phone. Uh, thank you. Uh, Secretary of State, Lord Mayor, Your Grace, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you all. Uh, my name is Mike Smith and I'm Chief Executive of Titanic Quarter Limited, uh, the company owned by Harcourt Developments and which is responsible for the regeneration of the land known as Titanic Quarter. All of you will have some knowledge about Titanic Quarter and many of you will have seen the initial plans released earlier this year for apartments, a hotel and office gateway around Abercorn Basin. We released these drawings as part of the overall marketing of Belfast at one of the world's most important property exhibitions, Mippen and Cannes. However, it has always been our intention to have a formal launch of this first phase of Titanic Quarter development here in Belfast. And I'm sure you would agree there is no more fitting place than this building and these magnificent drawing offices to introduce a new dawn for this vitally and truly important investment in our city's development and heritage. Some hundred years ago in these offices, the chief draftsman sat on a simple planned bench uh, beside the door at the back of this room and the section leaders were positioned in the alcoves on either side, just where the existing posters are. These offices were the birthplace uh, for over 1,700 ships, including the first oil rig Sequest, uh, built in the UK, and the largest oil tankers and boat carriers ever built on these islands. As well, of, of course, as the white star liners, RMS Titanic and Olympic. These were the offices that were the hub of a shipbuilding empire, and when restored, they will once again be the centre of a vibrant urban quarter of Belfast. To help us mark this important day, I'm very happy to welcome the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Hay. Stephen and good morning everybody and welcome and many distinguished people here today to celebrate this uh, very important occasion if I can just uh, pick out a few of them, the local member of parliament Peter Robinson, the Lord Mayor of Belfast, uh, Councillor Wallace Brown and of course Pat Doherty, the Chairman of Harcourt Developments and Eric Kuhn, uh, whose accent didn't sound very East Belfast to me when I, the architect, when I met him a few minutes ago. Well, my four-year-old uh, grandson was asking me yesterday what I was doing at the moment in Northern Ireland. And I said, um, well, I've been driving around at breakneck speed in a rally car on Sunday, uh, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to launch the Titanic. Uh, to which he said, I thought it said something about the Titanic being at the bottom of the sea, uh, Grandad. Anyway, it's not about the launch of the Titanic, of course, but this is a world-known brand and one which we are going to make fantastic use of in this uh, really exciting development in the Titanic quarter. And a hundred years ago, as Mike was saying, the drawing office here was the nerve centre of one of the biggest shipyards in the world, and one of the most famous ones, with thousands of technicians and craftsmen working on giant Atlantic liners whose names would have become famous throughout the world. And it's a graphic reminder that the world doesn't stand still, that the global economy is a pretty energetic beast, and that the massive change which decimated shipbuilding and other traditional manufacturing industries in Belfast hasn't stopped. In fact, the pace of change is accelerating, and it's uh, devouring many of the economies of those countries that uh, saw jobs flow into them from uh, traditional United Kingdom manufacturing centers such as uh, Belfast. So now we face um, huge ch challenges of competition from China and India, and we've got to stay up with that and in fact beat it by continued investments and continued uh, going value-added, going highly competitive, world-class, making sure we've got a first-class infrastructure, first-class physical development, skills, the science investments and the technology for the future. And we've got a powerful vision working with the uh, Belfast City Council for the regeneration of the city centre. We've already seen um, 
the renewal of public uh, uh, infrastructure and investment in Belfast City Centre itself, the master plans for the regeneration of the castle court and cathedral way areas, and we're building on a decade of investment in Lagenside, the flagship, the flagship scheme underway at Victoria Square. And now we have this terrific opportunity to spread this um, modernization, this regeneration, this wealth uh, to East Belfast through the uh, investments in the Titanic Quarter and to establish Belfast and Northern Ireland as the very best place to invest in, to do business in, to visit, and above all, to live in. And the opportunity is um, fantastic. I've just seen it for myself outside, a 75 hectare waterfront location close to a city centre, unparalleled anywhere else in Western Europe, especially with the worldwide interest that there is in the name Titanic. A unique example of cooperation between the public and private sectors uh, and a recipe for success, I believe, in the future. And it's absolutely vital that um, we build for that future to deliver the project uh, by 2012, the centenary of the Titanic's uh, maiden voyage. And I'm pleased that plans are already well advanced for a complementary project on the adjoining Science Park site, which will involve partial restoration of the Thompson Dock and Pump House, and fitting out the Pump House as an interpretive um, facility. So what we'll see here within a few years is a mixture of leisure, commercial, high-tech business, uh, information services, businesses as well, bringing together a competitive uh, investment to create jobs and take uh, this part of Belfast forward on a, on a world-class basis. The investments are around a billion pounds, which will generate up to 20,000 jobs, and that will provide a great launch pad for the future, just as this site provided such a great launch pad for so many of those ocean liners like the Titanic all those years ago. I want to see it as an icon for a world-class Northern Ireland, and I wish everybody involved all the best and thank everybody for all that's been done so far. Thank you very much. Your presence and support here today is extremely welcome, and uh, we thank you for it. Absolutely crucial to the success of the regeneration of the Titanic Quarter is the continued support of our co-promoters at the Port of Belfast, and indeed their willingness to share with us the opportunity the Titanic Quarter represents in shaping Belfast's future. I'm delighted to introduce the Chairman of the Belfast Harbour Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Kushner. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Secretary of State, Lord Mayor, Your Grace, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen. This is truly a great day, not only for the people of Belfast, but for all of Northern Ireland. The Titanic brand, as we know, is known throughout four corners of the world today. And we are charting a course that I believe will capitalize on that recognition for the benefit of everyone. The Belfast Harbour Commissioners are especially privileged to have been tasked by government with the responsibility of protecting the public interest in this very important, iconic and catalytic project. We are also committed to ensuring that this economic, historical and cultural gateway initiative represents the envy of city centre waterfront developments across the globe. We believe that this development will integrate more fully the east of the city with the vibrancy associated with the wonderful example of developments that have been created by our colleagues at Leggenside. Titanic Quarter is unique in terms of its location, its scale, and its size. It is, of course, and it's already been referred to earlier as essentially a private sector development. But its scale and importance means that it also touches on the interests and responsibilities of both local and central government. And to this end, uh, the decision by central government to assist in the coordination of the efforts of the various interested government departments and agencies 
by the appointment of a lead permanent secretary in the person of Stephen Quinn, who's here today, is to be very much welcome. And I know, in working with Stephen, he has put a great deal of time and commitment with his own team in it to ensuring that this, pro this project is progressed. We also believe that a partnership and coordination are key ingredients to the successful development of Titanic Water. And we are also delighted to work with our friends at the City Council and other constituencies to ensure such success. Now many people wonder if there will be many material economic benefits or dividends which emanate hopefully from our peace process. And I know to Secretary of State that in comments that you have made, and I hope they were properly quoted, uh, that you made last week, that you are going to fight for a peace dividend. And I believe that we should look no further than Titanic Quarter to see the potential economic dividend that peace would bring us. And to that end, I just want to refer to some of the benefits that are currently accruing to those of us that are around Titanic Quarter already. Firstly, I'm proud to be associated with what is a thriving port of Belfast, where we handle 9,000 vessels per annum. We have over 2 million passengers passing through the gateway per year, and it is Ireland's busiest ferry port. Look through at the centrally located airport with passenger traffic standing currently at further 2 million per annum, and flights to over 18 destinations. Look at the innovation that's taken place in the Northern Ireland Sands Park, and I noticed that Norman Hockley's here today, which hosts the wonderful names of Microsoft and the City Group. And of course we have the inter internationally renowned Odyssey, which is home to Ireland's only interactive discovery centre, namely W5. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are truly on the cusp of something exciting, dynamic and challenging. I'm old enough, sad to say, that seeing the film of Titanic in 1958, where the late and great Kenneth Moore starred, and of more recent times, the other film of Titanic. And I was reflecting on what those that have seen that film, Paul Rose, said, and I quote, It has been 84 years, and I can still smell the fresh paint. The china has never been used. The bed linen has never been slept. They call the Titanic the ship of dreams, and it really was. Isn't it ironic that once again we're here in the very halls where the colour of the paint was chosen, from where the china was ordered, and from where the best of Irish linen was procured. New dreams are once again being dreamed. New dreams of things never before dreamt. And the only question we should ask ourselves, why not? Belfast, through Titanic Quarter, deserves nothing less than to be the ship of dreams for a new generation, and I believe it really will be. I can assure you that each of the Belfast Harbour Commissioners are acutely conscious of their responsibilities and of the trust exercised by them on behalf of the wider public. Therefore, we will ensure that jointly through our colleagues at Titanic Water Limited that that trust will be justified when we realise the dreams and aspirations of the 21st century Belfast architecturally, historically, economically, and culturally through Titanic Water. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Frank. Um, we look forward to working together with you uh, and the rest of the team as the development unfolds. Another significant partner in the success of Titanic Quarter is Belfast City Council. We recognise and understand that Titanic Quarter lands are an important asset to the city and one that we all cherish. We are very grateful to the Council for its ongoing interest and support and I'm honoured that our Lord Mayor is here with us uh, this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Mayor of Belfast, Councillor Wallace Brown. Secretary of State, Your Grace, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to address you in such historic surroundings 
as these drawing officers. These officers, the slipways behind us and the Thompson Dry Dock at the far end of Queen's Island are massively important parts of the industrial heritage of this great city. As you have said, Secretary of State, the world economy has changed dramatically and we have entered the world of information and technology. Belfast is adapting and changing and we in the Council have recognised the new challenges through, for instance, our investment at the highly successful gasworks sites. But the history of a city is what gives its character. Its heritage moulds and shapes its people. We should not forget the great industrial feats of the past. Indeed, we must learn from them. And our city, I'm glad to say, is rebuilding itself. We are confident about the future, despite the many setbacks that might have broken a less resilient people than the citizens of Belfast. We are looking forward to a brighter future because we are working together to secure it. Titanic Quarter is a great example of that and an unparalleled opportunity to put our best foot forward. A chance to show the world that we can regenerate our industrial core with a style and panache that belies the image that many people overseas have of our city. Belfast City Council and the Northern Ireland Tourist Board have initiated the challenge of bringing forward a vision for a titanic tourist attraction in time for the centenary of the building of that great ship in 2012. It can only succeed as a partnership that brings together the co-promoters of this site. The Strategic Investment Board, the Council, the Tourist Board, Central Government, its agencies and the citizens of Belfast and Northern Ireland as a whole. The vision that has been put forward is just a first vital step towards achieving an exciting attraction that will capture the imagination of all the people in Northern Ireland and right across the world. The plan rolling out of the vision is grounded in reality and we will be working actively in the coming months and years to ensure we build a world-class attraction that will further cement Belfast's growing reputation as a major city for tourism. But this site is not just about tourism. The sustainable, sustainable and smart city of the future has citizens living and working in its core. For many years, and perhaps for good reasons, the residents of Belfast have moved to the outskirts and suburbs of the city, leaving gaps that we are now keen to fill. And last year, we began our city, State of the City initiative to find better ways for organizations to work together on the development and regeneration problems facing the city. We have many private and public sector organizations interested in the regeneration of Belfast. And the initiative has been encouraging those organizations to learn from the experiences of other places to agree on urgent areas of work and to work together to get them done. And what I think we are going to hear from Eric Kuhn when I finish is a master class in how to breathe new life into an area with such massive potential as the Titanic Quarter. I, for one, am looking forward to hearing his vision and I would just like to conclude by wishing you, Mike, and the team at the Titanic Quarter our best wishes and our pledge of support so that we might together achieve a brilliant new dawn for this site. Thank you. Thank you very much Lord Mayor and to Belfast City Council for their continued support uh, for Titanic Quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, our penultimate speaker is a man known in architecture and urban planning circles all over the world. As you will have seen this morning, Titanic Quarter is a very large piece of, of land. It takes about 15 minutes to walk from the City Hall to Odyssey, and it takes 20 minutes to walk from Odyssey to the end of 
not the northern end of the Titanic quarter. I think you'll agree that we need some special minds, both local and international, to ensure that this great opportunity is realized. I believe, and I hope you will too, after hearing him speak, that Eric Kuhn is the sort of architect that can bring a wonderful vision to reality. This group of companies views architecture as an agent of change, a builder of communities, and a source of inspiration for people. In my dealings with him, I've been reminded in so many inspiration, inspirational and colourful ways just how many elements are required to make successful regeneration happen on a large scale. The architectural practice of Eric R. Kuhn is working on four continents and has master planned and designed some of the world's great regeneration projects and is responsible for some truly superb pieces of urban architecture including at Darling Harbour in Sydney, Mid Valley Gardens in Kuala Lumpur, Chesapeake Bay in Virginia, Island Gardens in Miami, uh, Blue Water in Kent, and many more. I'm very glad to introduce to you today Eric Kuhn, and following Eric's presentation, uh, Colonel Harvey, Director of Operations for Harcourt and Deputy Chairman of Titanic Quarter, uh, will conclude this part of the proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Kuhn. Fifteen years ago, I met a gentleman who was head of the largest development corporation in Australia, a gentleman by the name of Stuart Hornery. And I was interviewing for a project down there called Darling Park. And Stuart said to me, he says, Eric, look, if you can't figure it out on the back of an envelope with a 2B pencil, you just don't know your stuff. Well, I discovered right then that Stuart had an incredible contempt for architects. And so, over the years, we used to poke fun at each other about the 2B pencil solution on the back of the envelope. And as he retired, I said to him, we've come a long way, haven't we? Because no longer do we have to create these ideas with 2B pencils on the back of envelopes. But we have to teach others to teach others about the genius of these ideas themselves. So when he retired, I gave him a box of 144 sharpened 2D pencils. And along with it was a small little card. And on this little card was a small poem that went like this. It was called The Chairman's Sketchbook. We do apologies to Spike Milligan. Said so the chairman to the architect, now that we've composed a brief, to build for us a landmark, why don't you do a sketch or three? Said so the architect to the chairman, like Hamlet in soliloquy. Let's see, which pencil shall I use? To be or not to be? <laughs> so we'll do a little bit of sketching here, a little bit of history, just a touch of philosophy for those of you that want to take a nap, and a lot of images about how we see Belfast and Titanic Quarter emerging. Now the antediluvian part of an old overhead projector just seems to be more appropriate for the drawing office. <laughs> okay. If we bring the lights down off of me and focus on the screen, that'd be great. Thank you. We make a distinction between civic versus public. You know, there's a lot of talk today about the public realm. But in the pursuit of the public realm, you forget one of the most powerful things about cities, and that's the robust pageantry and vitality of civic life itself. Titanic Quarter has a chance to restore that vitality to Belfast. 75 hectares of land within walking distance of the center of the city to become one of the truly most innovative waterfront developments anywhere in the world. Years ago, though, we used to look at cities in a very simple way. You could almost sketch the skyline of the city and understand the power elite. 
whether it was the church or the monarchy or the benevolent despots that were running the city, the palaces or whatever, they were all visible. But today we look at from a different vantage point. Look at this astonishing picture of Europe at night. Each one of those points of light, the center of commerce, the center of trade, a center of education, a cosmopolitan centerpiece. And Northern Ireland grows brightly in the British Isles. It grows brightly as a centerpiece in Europe. Somebody should answer that phone. In 1748, a map of Rome was put together that talks about a city in a way that was entirely new. Sure, it shows the streets and piazzas, as you'd imagine. But the thing that's unique about this map, called the Noli map of Rome, done by Gian Battista Noli, is it also showed the ground floor of all the buildings in Rome that the citizens of Rome could get to, the inside of the churches, the market squares, even the ground floor of the palaces. For the